Welcome back. I know it's been a while since I made a video. Uh, I do teach math here in Virginia, so I haven't had much time during the, the school year to uh, work on slide rule videos. Um, also, my wife is pregnant with our second daughter, so uh, that also has kind of uh, slowed things down. Um, I have some videos planned for this summer uh, that I want to make, including a video on the Picket B1. Uh, that's Picket's uh, only bamboo slide roll, uh, made by Rico. Um, the Faber Castell 487, that's a 20 inch slide roll. Uh, the Warren Circular Roll, uh, kind of a unique circular slide roll. Uh, and I have some more planned. Uh, we'll see what I'm able to make this summer. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, what I wanted to do is just uh, throw a video up uh, just so the channel wasn't uh, wasn't silent for, for a really long time. And uh, recently I've been teaching some statistics classes. Uh, you know, my training's in math, uh, so I'm not really a stats person. Uh, but I've been um, teaching some stats classes here, you know, basic introductory stats. Um, this video will kind of assume you're familiar with basic statistics things. Um, and uh, so I'm teaching stats, and, um, you know, there's always this question, do you let students use calculators? Uh, it's not possible for us to really uh, give tests in a computer lab, which would be really cool. Um, and so, you know... One option is uh, you still do the very ancient thing of giving students a T table and a Z table to use on their test, right? And uh, so here, here's your classic uh, normal distribution Z table. Um, the nice thing about the Z table is, uh, you know, you can look up your Z score and uh, you can find your probability. Um, and you could do that in reverse also. Um, and it's really nice and kind of comprehensive. You know, the resolution is what it is and the range is what it is, but uh, past that, um, it's nice. You can uh, you can go from z score to probability or or backwards. Uh, the problem with the t distribution and the t table, right, is that uh, you have the different degrees of freedom. So you would really need like a different z type table for every degree of freedom to have a complete, you know, t table. And so tables abbreviated only for uh, certain probabilities, right? Um, this is okay for confidence intervals because you know your your common confidence levels are are what's included here. Um, but if you want to do something like a significance test, uh, then you cannot compute exactly the p-value at the end like you might want. Um, you know, you can use a cutoff, you know, if the t-score the is beyond this, then okay, reject the null hypothesis. But uh, sometimes it's nice to see an actual p-value. And so I got to thinking about this. Is there, is there some solution to this problem? So I, I went online. Uh, I was able to find a paper from 1969 where uh, William C. Boyd, uh, makes this very interesting uh, T chart. Uh, and so what it does is uh, you have your p-values here, uh, your degree of freedom's here, and it's a nomogram, right? You should use this with a ruler. Okay. Um, line things up. Okay. Um, now, nomograms are uh, also among future videos I'm planning, uh, so I'm working on something uh, nomogram-related also. Uh, the problem with this is that... Uh, you know, the problem is not really well suited to a nomogram, and uh, you, what you'll find is that, uh, you know, the probabilities uh, that you'll get out of his uh, chart here are, are fairly far off sometimes. Um, so I thought, is there is there another solution? And uh, I got on the computer and I, I made the following chart. Okay. Um, so here it is. What it is here is, um, on the right... Essentially what you're seeing on the right is like a, a Z table. And so here you have uh, probabilities from a two-tailed distribution. Uh, and then here you can see these numbers that are circled. Uh, those would be Z values. Uh, so you could look up, for example, Z value 2, you know, about probability 0 0.05 um, on the Z table, right, following the empirical rule. Uh, what I did, though, is then I, um, I computed uh, what you would have to change uh, for the different degrees of freedom uh, to create the t-values. And I, and I originally used this with like something that was making a right angle. You know, you like put a right angle in here. Um, but I decided it's better if you, I put a second chart and then you cut that out. Okay. And so what you have here are your degrees of freedom across the bottom. And, uh, the way you should use this is, uh, you find the degree of freedom. Say you want degree of freedom 35. Uh, you use your cutout. You line that up. And then you use this. Uh, with these different lines uh, to compute your probabilities for different t-values. Okay, the lines now represent the t-values as you move to the left instead of the z's. Uh, you know, I don't make the students use this, but uh, I do show it to them 
uh, because it's a nice visual representation of what the difference between a t-value and a z-value is, right? Uh, t-values and z-values basically the same here for a degree of freedom and affinity, um, but then as you move to the left, uh, lower degrees of freedom, there is a distortion uh, between t and z-value, right? Okay, so let's have a look at a, a problem and just see how it would work for fun. Um, so uh, let's say you do a one sample uh, data collection here. So a random sample and you find the mean of your sample is 56.3, standard deviation 2.1, uh, and you had a sample size of 19. Um, could we do a significance test where a null hypothesis is that the, uh, the population mean is 55.0, an alternative is that it's simply not 55.0, um, I think I'm losing the camera. Okay. Uh, and we'll use significance level 0 0.05. Of course, we're just using this to see how we can compute the p value, so that doesn't really matter that much. Um, all right, so uh, let's see what I would have to do. First, I'd have to do a couple preliminary calculations, like compute the standard error. Uh, so that would be 2.1 over square root 19. And uh, since this is the slide roll channel, well, let's get the slide roll on this. Uh, so 2.1 here, I'm going to use b to get square root 19, okay, uh, and result down here on uh, d looks like 4.82, let's read that as 4.82, uh, so actually 0.482, okay, uh, that's my standard error. Uh, then what I'll do is uh, compute the test statistic, which will be a t-score, okay? Uh, that should be 56.3 uh, minus the null hypothesis value 55.0 and divided by that standard error 4.82, okay? And uh, let's try that. Uh, so here that's uh, 1.3 over 0.482. Okay. So here 1.3. Okay. And uh, let's see, 0.482. And I'm getting a result here about 2.70. All right. Uh, so degree of freedom here should be 18, 19 minus 1. Okay. Let's look up p-value using the chart. All right, so here I have 15, uh, 16, 17, 18 right here. So I'm going to line this up. Then what I'm going to do is find P, uh, find my 2.7 line. So 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, this line. Uh, lost it, 6, 7, coming in along this line. Uh, see here, okay, and uh, that's between 0 0.01 and what would be 0 0.02, it reads up as you go this way, uh, so let's read that as 0 0.015, okay, so uh, here I would reject the null hypothesis, uh, so just thought you would enjoy this, uh, this little chart that I made for my stats classes, um, maybe I can find a way to, uh, to link to the PDF, and you can have some fun with it, or suggest, uh, suggest how we could make it better. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Have a great time.